This time we're looking at climbing to the lower flight levels and I'm surprised just how low my oxygen saturation gets and how flying high can seriously affect your performance. I actually do feel a little bit lightheaded so I'm going to come down now. And uh, still 87%. Welcome to Shortfield, a channel all about the lighter side of aviation. And today we're taking the little sport cruiser up high to see how it performs and how your body reacts at two miles up, unpressurized and without oxygen. So buckle up, because here we go. Most pilots know that the higher we fly, the thinner the air gets, affecting not only the performance of your normally aspirated piston engine, but more importantly, you, the pilot in command. Your brain and organs rely on a constant supply of oxygenated blood to function correctly and any reduction of that supply will start to cause problems and eventually loss of consciousness and ultimately death. This is hypoxia. Although as pilots of small piston aircraft we rarely fly at altitudes where this could be a problem, it's worth being aware of the issue as even at relatively low flight levels where supplemental oxygen is not a requirement, Flying for extended periods here can start to affect you in ways you may not be aware of. Your blood oxygen saturation level is measured as a percentage out of 100%, usually using a small device known as an oximeter, which takes its readings through your index finger. Anything over 95% saturation is classed as in the normal range. Under 95% and over 93% is not normal, and you need this investigated by your doctor. If you get a consistent reading below 92%, you should seek immediate medical advice. These recommendations are from the UK NHS and would normally apply to anyone with a consistent reading taken in a normal environment. When we take these measurements at altitude, we are in a reduced oxygen situation and rather than being caused by any medical condition, the readings will reflect the lesser amount of oxygen available. However, this doesn't take away the danger that low blood oxygen creates and the need to rectify that situation with either supplemental oxygen or a reduction in altitude before you start to succumb to the effects. So come and join me in the cockpit for a flight to altitude and let's see how I cope. So here I am in Goopy, a lovely six year old uh, PS28 and uh, we're going to go and see how high we can get and how our oxygen levels are affected. So, um, we're 250 feet on the ground here at uh, North Weald and uh, I've got my little oximeter. So, I'm going to take a baseline test. So, powering it on. Put my finger in. And just wait for it to come up. And it's giving, I don't know if you can see that, 98, might be upside down, 98, 98% uh, oxygen. So that would be my baseline at 250 feet or ground level. So we're going to take it up hopefully to flight level 125, which is 12,500 feet, which is at the point where you need to, you need to have auxiliary oxygen and uh, hopefully <laughs> I don't get hypoxia but no it should be fine um, the legal uh, limit for carrying oxygen is twelve and a half thousand feet so hopefully all be good and what we'll do is we'll measure my oxygen levels as we go through the climb so let's get going Four and a half hours endurance, two dogs coming in. Roger, and uh, getting you staying down next for a few days. Back next Saturday, two dogs coming in. Thanks. Thanks. Go back in November, Dad. Final. Oh, back in November, we're on just four screws, just on the climb out, nothing else to affect. So it's going to zero, three zero degrees, one two knots. Downwind 
Mr. Dorothy. At four miles, up to direction, Cessna 152, routing north the island to the overhead. Currently indicating two. So we're currently at uh, just over 2,000 feet, and we will do a quick check. A quick ox check. That's check. Coxswain from Tango entering control, airspace radar control. Traffic 12 o'clock, two and a half miles, opposite direction, Cessna 150, departing, just reported passing 1,500 feet, cleared, not above 3,000. So we're at 97 now. So it just dropped a little bit, 96. And that's at 2,000 feet. We're now at 4,000 feet and we will get our oximeter here and we shall turn it on. Let's see what it says. So still at 96, you can see that. 96, outside air temperature is 15 degrees. So not much difference yet. So we can now... Okay, so there's, but there is flight level 80, sorry, 800. We shall Let's see what it says. I don't know how accurate these are, but it's now gone up to 95, oh no, it's going back down again now, 93. So it's flight level 80, 93%. So there we go, as near as damn it, flight level 100. Student Golf Brother Romeo, Juliet Victor, no retreat on flash message. Okay, let's continue the climb up to flight level 110. So, we're now approaching flight level 110. Climbing slowly now. So their temperature seven degrees. So there you go, flight level one one zero. Let's get this. So it's 
dropping now. 90. the worrying thing when it drops to 87. Keeping this on my finger all the time now. I actually do feel quite light-headed. In fact, what I'm going to do is, that'll do me. 11,005, uh, flight level 1150. I'm going to start heading down. I actually, I actually do feel a little bit light-headed, so I'm going to come down now. And uh, still 87%. We'll descend. Keep an eye on it as we descend. So I managed to get just over flight level 110 before I started to feel physically and mentally affected. I think that due to airspace restrictions and a headwind, I spent quite a while at 10,000 feet with my oxygen saturation sitting around 90%, that when I did get to climb higher, that further 3 or 4% drop started to, to affect me quite quickly. I didn't show it in the video, but at one point my saturation dropped below 85%, which was quite worrying. I think this just goes to show that even at relatively low altitudes of around eight to 9,000 feet for long periods, this must have an effect on your judgment. And although oxygen is not a requirement at these heights, any loss of attention or awareness can be dangerous in a small aircraft. So that does it for this episode. What's your thoughts or experiences of flying high and have you ever felt the onset of hypoxia? Please pop your comments in the section below. I'd love to hear about your thoughts, experiences or recommendations and I read every comment. Thank you so much for watching, I've really enjoyed making this video. If you'd like to see more content like this then please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so I can let you know next time I upload a video. Hopefully you found this video helpful, but please note I'm not an instructor, this is all based on my personal experience as a private pilot in the UK. Please check all the latest rules and requirements as things may have changed since this video was recorded. Other countries and regions may have different rules or requirements, so ensure you check your local ones. Fly safe guys, this short field out. <laughs>